so the law the laws of God are perfect the laws of man are imperfect that's clear that's noticeable that's beyond question when man is atheist he wants to imitate the lawmaker he makes his own law and the people are allowed to break God's law so then the people become very unhappy because they're breaking God's law and fulfilling the atheist laws that doesn't help them so therefore it's very very serious the situation is very deplorable if man wants to make his own religious laws and he's also becoming a speculator in other words when he is conditioned every man is imperfect by constitution under the conditioning of material existence and there's not the least possibility that even the most materially advanced man can enact perfect legislation in other words man is not capable of creating laws he just has to obey the law of God this is so nice I really love it because what's the law of God <clears throat> sunrise sunset that's the law of God calendar changes climate changes earth movement sun position of the sun solar systems galaxies chemical components combining together combining together to create whatever is there in creation marvelous majestic fantastic things everything from inert matter when I see marble you know I love marble not necessarily when it's put all over the walls but marble this phenomena of colors crystallized into hard stone or granites sometimes you can see the marbles the way the colors go in and out huh? that there must have been some liquid mess at some point like something you make the dough the chapati dough huh? you go in and you put and finally you make your chapati no so it like it looks like this big mess of matter it was like dough it was like putting in like this and finally it became marble it became stone <coughs> that is that, that this is absolutely amazing right beautiful stone yellow blue orange green black snow white mixtures granite travesites my god <laughs> everything you can imagine in colors is there in the stones beautiful colors and some stones they're even more than that they're called semi-precious stones and other stones they are precious stones and when you start polishing them you get the most amazing shine from them and like crystal effects all this is made by the law of God he has put the law and matter obeyed him in the same way the Lord allows a seed to be put in the earth and then a little water on it and boom springs up a new life-giving plant and it grows and grows and becomes a tree and finally it becomes so big and it starts giving fruits to everybody from a seed with a little water and a little earth that is the law of God my friend you want to make something like this well why don't you create another seed let's let's see one of your seeds 
can you at least put out the seed of grass or maybe make the seed of some very humble shrub? No, you cannot make anything. You cannot make the seed of anything because you cannot create life. You cannot modify the matter. You can, you do have the ability to, to destruct and to configure the genes in such a way that they lose their natural behavior. But you don't know what are the reactions which you will get for doing so. And you're not creating life, you're just mutilating life. This is what we call transgenic uh, genes. So, we're not talking about this, it's a very boring subject. <clears throat> but the fact is, the matter of fact is that, <coughs> that the laws are made by God. God is the law, God is the truth. We don't need even your commentary. Here, a Bhagavatam commentary by Prabhupada, that is very nice. But your commentary is not necessary. My commentary is also not necessary. But to meditate upon Prabhupada's commentary and the great sages' commentary, that's very nice. Man cannot create law. When man starts hampering and like modifying the law for his whatever convenience, he's going to get slashed. He's going to be chastised. So therefore we have to be so careful, you know, to behave a whole lifetime according to the law of God is not exactly easy. So many temptations come our way. Looks like a few temptations every day. It's not, it's absolutely not easy. Anything to keep up sternly and firmly following the laws of God. So we will be tested again and again. <coughs> As many days as there in our life, I guess as many tests will be there or more. Sometimes there's more than one test a day. So let's face it, my friends. The laws are the laws and don't turn them around. Don't do any silly thing. You may think you can get away with it. You can't. Comes to my mind, sex life. Sex life has a, a very clear function. But you can also think, well, I can also satisfy my sexual craving by myself. In the form of masturbation. But that's not spiritual. This is not given nothing. And then you may say, okay, no, I won't do it myself. Then I'll find somebody I don't have trouble with, like a, like a same-sex partner. And then you think, oh, now I'm lucky. I can enjoy sex, but I don't have to bring up children. <coughs> hmm? This is nonsense complete nonsense yes they say but we love each other yes so you're supposed to love everybody what's the big deal with that but you cannot have children with that person so what is the nonsense there it's against the law of god you don't think so well the bhagavatam says so So it's not strange that these desires exist because lust is such a strong, powerful agent, you know. Practically once you, I think I was lusty before puberty, I don't know what it, uh, 
But definitely when puberty comes, then you go all bananas about it. So, the law of God, that's important to understand. What is the law of sex life? What is the law of eating? What is the law of studying? What is the law of uh, planting the soil? What is the law of making a house? You say, I want to have a house, but I don't like to spend in the foundation. You know? Much money is spent in the foundation of the house. <laughs> and all that money you don't see afterwards because it's all under the ground. So many people think, no, this foundation business I really don't like. I just going to make the walls. So then they make the walls and it's very nice and the house looks very nice. But after one year, a little shake, a little long lot of rain comes. And all of a sudden the house goes long, 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 long. It starts cracking the walls and everything. Why? Well, because it's out didn't have a foundation, cannot sustain the weight of what you constructed without a solid foundation, without a ring anchor or whatever you may have put there or not. So, you want to break the laws of God? You're just foolish. How can you expect anything happy and joyful after you break the laws of God? You're supposed to follow the laws of God. You're supposed to make things so nice in your life. Do things according to His pleasure. I heard a class of Prabhupada yesterday. Prabhupada was so stern. He said, so you like dogs? That means in your last life you were a dog or in your next life you will be a dog. Poor dogs, no? See bridge? You like horses? Means in your last life you were a horse, or in your next life you will be a horse. You really like them. I mean, one thing is to like them like you like everybody, and you know, we see an animal, you know. The, the other day I was feeding a little monkey with a small, uh, with, with a little syringe, you know. A little monkey. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do such things, you know. But I'm sorry, I cannot become a monkey now and take care of monkeys all day. But these are the things. Attachments are here. You can become attached to a monkey. Bharat Maharaj became attached to a deer. I mean, they are very beautiful, those deers. And when they come up to you and snub and, and push their little soft wet nose onto your skin and push you and say, Oh, I'm a deer. Huh? I want to be dear to you. You know, the word deer and deer. <laughs> it's written different, but spoken almost the same. No? The deer became dear to the dearest of devotees, Bharat Maharaj. And then he had to take birth as a deer. So it wasn't a joke. It turned out very costly for him to become attached to this deer. So you think you're transcendental to that, huh? You see, you, you think I'll never become attached. <laughs> the laws, the scriptural injunctions, they are given by self-realized soul as God has revealed His laws to them. And when I go to the South American natives and I hear how they talk about Mother Nature and all that, it's the same conclusion of the Vedas, the same laws. They recognize the laws of God and that's what they're doing, following the laws of God. Simple living, high thinking. What's the need of all this mundane technological advancement? Has it really brought us further? 
the Chaskis, they were living in the Inca times, and they would travel in three days from Santiago to Lima, or something like that. That means by running, they would know all the continent of South America. They didn't need a bus company. <laughs> Can you imagine how they saw nature as they were running along? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. How they were seeing it. So therefore, we should follow the law of God as much as much as we understand it to be. And we should follow the law of God with great reverence and with love. And a little fear too. A little fear is not bad because if you think, oh, I can do anything, everything is fine for me, then you may also find out that God didn't approve your attitude and now has to show you nonsense by making you fall down. I've fallen down so many times in my mind, in my life. So I know very well what is a fall down. Because if you fall down in your mind, that's also a type of fall down. It's just the others don't know. Right? So you're like, I'm fine. But in your mind, you're not fine. So, so when you fall down in your mind, then you become humble. Oh, I'm not such a great devotee as I wish I am. I'm still like a, like a beginner, still like hoping to get out of Maya. And, and in this way, uh, like they say, monkey business, no? Getting out of the monkey business mentality. So, in a sense, a mental fall down is helpful because it, it's like you get, you get like uh, somebody slashing you on the face. <laughs> what, who the hell do you think you are? <coughs> so, things like that, no? But <coughs> actually, actually, the, the situation is that, that Krishna, Krishna, he wants us all to be, he wants us all to be with him. <laughs> so he's inviting us and he's showing us a different panorama. Like if you're married and you, you are good Krihasta, then you can serve your family at home and then you go to the temple and serve the devotees. But if you're not a good Krihasta, then the home sucks you in like a black hole. And then you, in the hole you say, but my wife, I want to be happy and you want to be happy. Yeah, you do what I say. No, you do what I say. And in this way, they're making their life miserable for each other because Krishna is not there for them. On the other hand, let's face it, Brahmacharini, Brahmachari life, that's glorious, glorious, because it's so glorious because can serve so many people. Not only that, you can have the, the, the fortune of being associated to so many people. What a wonderful thing. In that sense, I mean, what can I say? I'm like, I have a great luxury. I can speak with very intelligent swamis all day. I can do service with very surrendered, wonderful devotees all day. I can 
make beautiful excursions to holy places. I can present to others the, the, the gifts which my guru gave to me. Fantastic. I can make music for Krishna, paint for Krishna, design for Krishna, make websites for Krishna, write books for Krishna. Well, I mean, writing books is because you feel that there's some technical point to explain. I'm not a writer of transcendental literature. I'm more a technical compiler of valuable information which I've heard or felt in my life. That's all. I cannot write about the Leelas of Goranga or Sri Hari. This is far too advanced. So this is the message of today. The law, the truth, and love. Real love, real truth, real laws. Not false laws, not fake, stupid laws. In the meeting we had in Rishikesh, we were talking a lot about the laws and how we have become disobedient with the natural laws. And thus our life has become very complicated and that the places where people come for pilgrimage should be the place people should learn about the laws again because otherwise if we don't follow the laws even in the holy cities then where else how you expect Delhi and Mumbai to follow the laws of God that's what the holy cities are all about so this is our message of this morning